Wouldn't it be nice to have purse bees? And does it even ever exist? Maybe we'll get kind of close to it at one point. This tag video, which is created by my good friend here, Kat L, it's about predicting how your collection looks like in 10 years time. And for me, in 10 years time, I will be in my 50s. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amy. And by the way, there is nothing wrong with being 50 years old. Obviously, everyone goes through that. I feel like I will be a lot wiser when I turn 50. I already feel much wiser now that I'm in my 40s versus in my 30s and 20s. I also feel like my style would have changed a lot by then and that I would probably need a lot less things. I feel like my values would have changed a lot in terms of needing less, needing to eat less, needing to sleep less, needing to worry, you know, about the small stuff. Basically becoming wiser and so I feel like it would translate into how my collection would look like as well. I think it's just a normal process of life and of course your taste would change. I probably... I don't know, maybe I would still wear something like this. I am wearing my Hermes scarf right here and a lot of you loved how I wear it this way. So I will, by the way, show it on my Instagram stories. I already see that my style and my preference and just even how I want my collection to evolve changing already, I'm sure as you have noticed throughout uh, watching my videos if you've been following uh, this channel for a while. I am kind of a shopaholic and I am an emotional shopper, I discovered, very much so. And so sometimes I do make impulse purchases and sometimes when I love a brand or certain things so much, I will buy multiples of, which is not so good. It doesn't quite line up with my goal of keeping my collection tight and classic and timeless. Um, so I'm still learning, I'm still learning, but I think we're getting there. Here's how I'm gonna tackle this tag. I'm gonna share with you, realistically speaking, what I think I would still have uh, in my handbag collection. So whatever I have now, what I think will still be staying in my collection. And then I will also share with you, ideally, how tight I would like my collection to be. And that includes bags that I already own and also some that I don't own yet. So let's start off with my favorite, which are Chanel bags. I have the most Chanel bags in my collection and I definitely realistically see myself still owning all of my Chanel minis in 10 years time. Some of you might remember that it was extremely, extremely difficult for me to get my hands on this. The whole lining up on launch day super early and I almost couldn't even get it. And in the end, I still got it because of my good friend, Amy Jo. And yeah, there's just so much history and this bag turns out to be one of my most worn, most traveled with. And so I honestly feel like this will still stay in my collection in 10 years time. In fact, it will stay in my collection for as long as I possibly can and until I pass it down. I think that's probably one of those things uh, that will happen to these bags. Uh, they're so like they're impossible to get now, right? Because they don't make caviar minis anymore. And so I feel like it's a no brainer that these two will still be in my collection. Um, for this one, it's just one of my favorite colors. Red is my favorite color. And like, as long as I could remember, as little as I could remember, red is always what attracts me the most. Red is what also kind of makes my skin look more lively. It just gives me that contrast and also just complements me really well. And of course, this exact one, I think was also the very last season that they still did caviar. And then after that, it was all lambskin. So just because of that reason, it's just extra special. And also, um, it's just so, it's just so beautiful. I mean, it's a classic. It's a classic mini. These are classic minis, uh, even though they are seasonal bags, they don't make minis all the time, but they they are pretty much considered classic. So let's just show a couple that are a bit less obvious, right? So I have right here the Gabriel Small Hobo and the Chanel 19 Small Flat Bag. And both of mine are in black color. This one is in lamb skin and this one is in distressed calf skin. So why did I choose these two? I feel like your collection, no matter how tight you want it to be, you just need 
some bags that are kind of fun and different to wear sometimes. Yes, my goal, I still strive to keep it timeless, tight, small, whatever, manageable, however adjective you want to use. But at the end of the day, I feel like you still need fun bags. And for me, these two are... They are, they are different enough from your classics and they are unique looking and everything that they, they need to be in a collection. It's sort of like, I feel like if I didn't have them, I will definitely miss them. So realistically, you know, I would still have these two. Uh, for the Gabrielle, especially with all the rumors being discontinued soon, I feel like it's definitely a must in my collection. It's also has been one of my favorites since the beginning. I've pretty much um, enjoyed and have nothing but good things to say about the Gabrielle. Um, obviously, I have two and I am selling my other one because, you know, Hermes is a little expensive. I kind of have to like cut somewhere so um because i have two i tend to always just wear one and so the black will most likely be the one that is still going to be in my collection for the long term and i am in fact letting go of my burgundy color one um but honestly if i didn't have to be so responsible right i would keep both because they're both stunning colors and just beautiful and classic colors um, but if I had to just choose one, black is always a no-brainer. So the Gabrielle is just an absolute, absolute favorite of mine. I always still get asked, is it worth it and all of that. You know, in the end, it's all personal. You have to make that choice for yourself. But for me, it's always been one of the best bags that I own that is so unique and different. And it's got a lot of, um, well, Carr's legacy, obviously. It's his design. And uh, if they're going to discontinue it, then, well, it's going to be one of those like mini caviar flap situation where you can't get it anymore, right? Unless you get it pre-loved. So I feel like I feel like it's a no-brainer, too. Um, for the Chanel 19, I think it's just one of those things where uh, it's such a comfortable bag to wear. And I've always kind of just loved mine ever since I got it. I like I just fell in love with it the moment I saw it. I didn't want to fall in love with it actually. I, I had asked about it and I you know I kind of like was very curious. It was still like so fresh when it came out. But then the moment I saw it, I touched it and I tried it. I was like, okay, there's no way I'm not taking this home. Um the first seasons were some of the most beautiful ones. Mine is in lambskin and it's so like, you guys probably don't think that I use my bags, but I, I actually use this one quite a bit and it's still so puffy and everything. Like, the lambskin on this is just incredible. There's no, like, weird wrinkles and stuff like that. And, of course, I do know how to keep my bags in good condition and I store them properly and all that. But besides that, it's just a really good and hardworking and just such a fun, cool bag to use, right? Um, I mean, look at it. It's so cool. It's so cool. And I do tend to wear it just with the handle. I don't quite use the strap often. Okay, let's switch gears to something Hermes. And I have right here the Della Cavalleria crossbody bag in Epsom gold color palladium hardware. As often as you may have heard and maybe not totally understand until you are, um, owners of their items um I, I feel like it's just one of those things where you uh, first of all you have to like the bag first uh, but it, it, if it's a bag that you already own in your collection and you really did like the bag when you bought it like you didn't just buy it because you were offered it then you really just want to keep them because they just feel like such piece of I don't want to say piece of art, but they really are. Like you just feel the difference in terms of like, you could almost feel like the person making it, they put in so much attention. And if you could even spot any flaws, it's just the flaws of like, you know, the stitching not being like, like machine exact. It's kind of like you can feel like it's a handmade item. Um, and 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 just like the craftsmanship basically i don't know how else to say it without sounding like cliche or anything it's just one of those things where once you've owned something and if it is a style that works for you 
you just don't want to let it go. So this is one of those things where, you know, I got offered this bag and of course I love this bag after using it. It's like such, this one is such a, um, it's really an easy bag to use and it's also super roomy for what it is. Um, I should do a review. I don't know if you guys are interested in a review, but anyway, um, it's one of those things, right? It's not a classic. This is not a classic in the Hermes library, but it's one of those things where if you love something, you just love something. And it's just, you know, you're not getting offered this every day. You, you can't just go in and buy these. Just when you think that, oh, it's all going to be Chanel and Hermes bags. Well, I'm going to show you an LV bag, actually. So this is the Louis Vuitton Twice. And I feel like this will stay in my collection for as long as it I can because this bag, um, unlike all the other LV bags that I've owned and no longer have, this bag has always stayed and I never really thought about parting with it because it's such a workhorse. And this is one of those things where you want to have in your collection. You just sometimes can't always be dressy. You can't always be using your serious bags. This is literally has become my errands bag. It's not my everyday bag, but it's one of those things that I just take um, when I need to like, I don't know, it could be anything. Like I could be doing groceries, going to the park with my nephew, um, it's many things. And so um, this is the bag. This is the bag and this, has been discontinued yes um but i think of all their leather bags when they just started doing more leather bags this is just one of those amazing amazing one uh, good construction uh good quality nice thick leather um this color even though it does have the monogram embossing it's just so under the radar it's also super flat and stays close to your body it has a crossbody strap and it actually fits a lot it, it probably fits more than the mini rectangular so it's you know it doesn't look like it but it actually it this is this is the definition of a practical small bag some of you might not believe that i will still have nano bags in my collection in 10 years time but nano bags are just such a lifestyle. They are an accessory. They are a decoration. I realized that this color here, which is so stunning and beautiful, is so similar to my Rose Mexico little rodeo charm, which is like, this was such a lovely, thoughtful gift from a subscriber. And they are, they're literally like I would say like 99% the same color it's stunning right however I don't use the pink one very much because I baby that one and I'm just like so precious with that one I definitely do see myself using this one like all the time the, this black one is always sitting right there right by my door so that I can grab it anytime uh, because that's how often I actually use my black one because black lambskin is just so carefree you can't get any more color transfer to it and this lambskin has been wonderful I started really falling in love with lambskin because um, they do wear better in the long term they just age more gracefully if that makes sense so yes for me micro bags are probably realistically gonna still stay in my collection i feel like the two most iconic ones in my collection that i really really use and gravitate are uh well is this one for sure the black micro bag from uh chanel this one was from 21k and uh yeah mine has the magnetic closure which i really really love it's super handy but i also you know i also feel like you have to have something monogram as much as some of you might think that oh monogram is getting so loud and sometimes you just don't want to be seen with monogram so much and um it can be loud i agree uh, but if it's this small then it's not loud at all it's actually just cute so for me this is um you know, this is the new version of the 
current nano speedy and i think this is just the most adorable thing remember i said that i don't think i can just live with serious bags i need to have really casual bags sometimes bags that i know i just don't even have to worry one bit these ones so here we have some longchamp and Oh my goodness, lately I've just been grabbing these two so much, especially this one. I was so surprised that I actually wear this one so much. And this one is not even that expensive. It's literally the cheapest, I think, uh, is it the cheapest? It's one of the cheapest anyway. It's like so affordable. I got this one on Farfetch and it comes in so many colors. This is a cotton net. So this is a collaboration between Longchamp and uh, what's the brand again? Filet. I love that it has two straps. I usually just carry it like this. Look how cool it is. Like in the summer, when you're sweating, when it feels like a sauna outside, you just don't want leather and you don't want to sweat in your leather. This is the answer. I'm not even kidding, guys. So I feel like this is something that, you know, even though it's not like super high end premium luxury, it, I definitely will still have things like this in my collection. I have a uh, one of these nylon pouches where I put my card holder, my like any of the small SLGs so that they don't just float in this like see-through bag, right? I just use one of these. So this is from the sports sack. I put all of the SLGs in there and then anything else like my phone, uh, tissue, pack of tissue, hand sanitizer. I just throw it in there like like that, right? That's my phone there. And it's all good and it's super comfortable. This little handle too is so generous. Right here, I have another version of a Longchamp bag. And this one, why I like it is because it's just, it has everything. It has a crossbody strap, it has a top handle. It has this beautiful nylon, very sturdy. As you can see, I chose a print and color that I absolutely love, red, of course, and yeah, you just need bags like this in your in your collection. Bags that are um, just so different from your most luxury, which, you know, I can't be wearing this every day, walking around in my neighborhood, going to the local restaurant, which is like such a small mom and pop shop. Like I can, I suppose, but I, I wouldn't want to. There's a time and place for for that and there's a time and place for things like this. This one is my newest one. I really, really enjoy this bag. This is the Murda Ray bag. Um, again, same features, just super easy to get in and out of. It has two different handles and it's such a good price for all Italian craftsmanship. My coupon has expired, but I will link to a new coupon so you can still save if you're interested in this. Um, yeah it's just such a wonderful bag i mean i can't look at it it's so cool too so you need things like these you need, you need bags that are just so casual okay so those are bags that i still own that i know or feel at least realistically i would still own in 10 years time now let's just kind of narrow it down right if i could only have 10 bags and 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 that's it which ones would they be and of course that's such a difficult thing to to do because i don't know any handbag addicts out there can just live with 10 bags but if i would try right if i were to try and imagine that happening then for sure i have to have this one so this is my classic flap small size and this one was from 21a i think so um, doesn't matter which season, it doesn't matter anymore. So this is a caviar light gray small classic flap and this is the only true classic flap in my collection. Um, I think it's uh, again pretty explanatory. It's just a timeless classic. It's my only classic flap. In fact, if I could have a black one, I would. Trying to not repeat doubles and since we only have 10 choices, we're really narrowing down to literally the best of the best and since this color is such a great color it's just a it's just a nice light gray uh, it goes with virtually anything um summer outfits and i mean i wouldn't wear this with my black wool coat but i guess that's the limitation for this bag i just want to keep it as pristine as possible and transfer free of color 
um, regardless, I, I, this has to be one. This has to be part of my most tight-knit 10, only 10 bag collection uh, in 10 years time. This has to be it. My only other Chanel bag, yes, only two, only two in my list. My only other Chanel bag that I would want to be part of my core collection is a mini flap with the top handle which of course I don't own yet because I haven't been able to get one yet. As much as I love the mini crossbodies and especially because I already have two beautiful caviar ones and those, honestly speaking, they're not going anywhere. But if I could only really narrow down to the top 10, I feel that having that top handle is such a game changer because it still has that strap. I can still wear it crossbody. However, having that top handle kind of adds to the versatility of it. And on top of that, it's it's something that I really enjoy using. I love top handles. They are just more sophisticated. And especially, you know, I mentioned before that sometimes the classic mini flaps, they just feel a bit too casual. And because you can, usually only wear it crossbody because the strap is quite long. It doesn't really go with your most elegant outfit or evenings. And therefore, I almost always kind of put it back on its shelf and grab another bag instead, something that has a top hand. Okay, let's move on to some Hermes, which I think the rest of them are Hermes. Yeah, pretty sure that's what I wrote down and I know it's, it's such a drastic change, right? Now that I'm fully invested in my journey and, and like intending to continue this journey for a little while, um, I, I really see a lot of Almez bags in my collection. And part of the top 10 will, I mean, it's obvious, right? It's obvious that this has to be it. This is my dream, dream Birkin. It's like the perfect combination. I can't ask for a better combination. And those of you who saw the unboxing, thank you so much for the comments. Um, I just love it. And it's just perfect with this beautiful Rodeo from uh, uh, the loveliest subscriber. And it's just so thoughtful, beautiful color, beautiful contrast, goes so well with the rose gold. And it's just, it's just the most perfect. I, I mean, I, I don't think I need to justify this at all. And in fact, I don't need to justify anything, but I'm just saying this has to be my most, um, at this point, most holy grail bag. And it took so long and so much effort to get it. And it's all worth it, yes. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is my Togo Birkin 25 Noir and rose gold hardware. Stunning, right? Fourth one, right? Fourth bag in the 10th bag uh, limit uh, has to be a Kelly, of course, and you know, a Birkin, and then your the next thing is like a Kelly, right? Or if you have a Kelly, then you might want a Birkin. Not like you can really decide exactly what you're gonna get offered, but if I could choose the order, I feel like now that I have the beautiful Birkin, which is a good size bag, then I would like a mini Kelly next. I'm trying to attract that into my life, right? Mini Kelly, please. Mini Kelly would be oh, a dream. The If I can get that as my next offer, that would be a dream come true and another holy grail. For the Birkin, I was pretty specific. I want it neutral. Um, but for my Mini Kelly, because I am definitely... I definitely know that it will be part of my collection. It all just It's just a matter of time, right? So for the Mini Kelly, I feel like... It can be a range of color. It can be neutrals, of course. It can be grays, it can be whites. It can be red. It can be fuchsia pink. Um, it can even be green. I love greens too. Um, I mean, case in point, I think these colors look great on me. Actually, there's this new red color this season, uh, this year at Hermes, and it's called Rouge Berlin. Oh my gosh, the perfect, true, uh, bright red. And it's between that and the Rouge Ash, which is like that perfect burgundy blood red. Ah, what a dream, if I could get that one. So yeah, that's just me daydreaming. We spoke about the Mini Kelly, so next 
of course, is a regular size Kelly, and I would probably go with a Kelly 25 in Cellier. Number six is a bag that I already own, and I do definitely see this one to be part of my core collection. And it is this beautiful 18 size Picotin Touch. And this one is in Noir Clémence and um, Matte Alligator Exotic Handle Palladium Hardware. And I think, I think when I unboxed this, you guys could see and tell that I was really, really happy that this was, you know, one of my first Hermes bags. And it's also in like the most perfect combination for me. Black is always great for me. I honestly, I will never get tired of black bags. If all my bags were black, I would still be happy. I'm not joking. Um, black is just that easy of a color to to style, and I actually do look and and uh, style black very well. So I, for me, this is a dream combination. It's like so perfect. Um, so yeah, this one would be part of my top ten. Believe it or not, this is probably one of the least expensive bags so far. I think. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Even the Chanel top handle is more expensive than this bag. So it's such a good value for what it is. And if I were to just have a top 10 collection and I needed something that was more on the casual side, let's just pretend that we don't have any Longchamp or anything like that, then this is the most casual one that I can still feel comfortable wearing. And it's quite under the radar. It doesn't scream any branding. Um, and it's just an easy bag. It's so easy to get in and out. It fits a ton. So yeah, love, love, love this bag. At this point, I feel like I need a true crossbody bag. And yes, I already have the Della, the Della Cavalleria. But if I didn't have that one, right? If that one, uh, that one is still sort of not that classic core. You know what I mean? Like it's not the timeless classic. It's beautiful. I, I will still have it. Trust me, I'll still have it. But if I were to like pick one that is really classic, timeless for me, I would pick a Constance 18. So um, what color? I'm not sure yet. A tube would be nice. Oh my goodness, I totally forgot about this one. This one is part of my top 10 actually. So they're not all Hermes bags for the rest. This is just one of the bags in my collection that I always um, needed to grab when I have a, a real kind of evening function, weddings and things like that. None of the other bags that I have right now really meets that criteria. But again, because I don't have a top handle mini and I also like any of the kind of smaller size bags, they all just have like crossbody straps and um, nothing, nothing like this, nothing kind of like really elegant and dressy and just really evening like this. So yes, this has to be part of my top 10 too. Oh my goodness, I totally forgot about this one. And it was just sitting right there too. Um, and you probably saw it on the thumbnail. So why the Lady Dior? Because this is just an iconic piece. And um, it's also my only Lady Dior. When I bought this, I was so glad that I finally took the plunge. Again, it took me so long. I think I got it just like two years ago, right? I think I got it just two years ago. Yeah, I got this two years ago. And then I got the Classic Flap last year. Yeah, it took me forever. But I'm just... You know, I think over time you just realize that you always get distracted by a seasonal bag and like you get distracted by new releases and you always kind of put these away because you always think that, oh, it's classic anyway, it's always going to be there, but then they keep increasing prices. So I'm just so glad that I got it two years ago before it's way, 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 way too late because this bag is so expensive now, but I'm just glad. I have the one and that's the only one I need. The last two are going to be more casual i feel um because i have all these serious bags now right lady dior birkin kelly sellier they're kind of all serious um even the classic flap kind of feels serious sometimes you just don't want to wear your classic flap everywhere so i feel like i need two that are a bit more casual but still you know absolutely beautiful heritage craftsmanship all of that quality um so one is a mini lindy I definitely have my eyes on the Mini Lindy. I know it's not a quota bag, but it's extremely, extremely hard to get. The last one would be another Kelly. Yes, another Kelly. 
but I think I would need a retourné style at this point because I'll have the cellier, it's the perfect cellier size 25, but I'll probably want a retourné, so probably 25 size. I do like my smaller size bag, it does suit my frame too. Um, but I'll just have a more casual Kelly. I like that the Kelly does have the strap, so having it in retourné makes means that it's easier to get in and out. So I, de I definitely see myself with two Kellys. Yeah, two Kellys in my core collection. I'm sure this video is uber long. Even my battery ran out. Uh, in any case, I'm gonna tag a few lovely friends here. Uh, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna just be spilling out names. So of course I have to tag my friends Lou, Karis, Melon Melbourne, Jerusha, Isabel Style, Oksana, GPS, Fashion Junkie, Amelia Rose, Michelle Wong, Cassie Thorpe, Romina Rose, The Real Shaquin, Jacob, Maddie, Jessie Style. So yeah, a lot of people on my list. And if I haven't tagged you, well, just, just do this tag, I think. It's so cool and it's, it's so good to to maybe just like narrow down, narrow down what your core collection is like and then maybe that will even help you make better purchasing decisions today because you are working towards that goal, right? It's a long-term goal. Thank you so much, Kat, for tagging me and for creating this tag. Check her out. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Also, you can support me further by becoming a channel member where you get more exclusive content or you can just buy me a coffee. All the links are down below. Thank you so much. Have a great day and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.